as we're, as we're getting Eric mic'd up here, Eric's going to do the presentation on Datto. Datto is a product that we use to back up your networks. A lot of you are our customers. You notice that several times he said, the only way you're going to get everything back is have a good backup. Yep. Let me just give you one story as he's getting hooked up here, what happens when you don't have that. I recently got called into a dentist office in Tavares. I'm not going to tell you who it was. I don't remember his name, honestly, right now. But he had a big dental practice. He had 20 computers in there. So that's a large dental practice. He had many chairs, three dentists. He was the head dentist. He had a major ransomware attack. Somebody in his office, all they had to do was click on an email and click on an attachment to that email, and they got a ransomware attack on their computer, and it spread throughout the entire network. It suddenly locked down his whole network. All of his medical records were on a server in his office. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't work at all. When I pulled up, his entire parking lot was full of patients that he could not see. Okay, this is exactly what happens. And I come in there, he's an older gentleman, he had, a, had the white lab coat on. He was standing by his server and he looked at me and, he, and the first words he said was, this is the closest I've ever felt in my life to having a heart attack. He said, I'm completely locked out. I can't do anything. All he had for backup was a little external hard drive plugged into his server. Windows backup was running to it, which is a free backup, that's right. But guess what the first thing the encryptors go after? That little backup. So he had no backup. He had 20 years of records on his server with no backup at all. And guess what his IT guy had been trying to sell him for several years? For $200 a month, he could have had a fantastic backup. They would have backed up everything and also put it into the cloud. Did he buy it? No. The last I heard, he was over $50,000 in, and he still wasn't back up yet. So not trying to scare anybody, but that's an actual example. And we see them regularly, but our clients get back up because we can restore their data that's been encrypted because we have the right systems to do that. And those systems are Datto, and I want to introduce Eric right now. Eric is with Datto, and a um, little bio on him. Eric Torres joined Datto as a channel development manager in March of 2015. Prior to joining, he ran Datto's sales operations and business practices for a successful 65-person managed service company out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. There he was a member of the Datto Advisory Board and given peer-to-peer -peer presentations at several industry events, sharing his knowledge and expertise on business continuity. Recently, he was named to CRN Magazine, that's Computer Reseller News. Uh, he was named Computer CRN Magazine's 100 People You Don't Know But You Should. Eric uh, brings a passion for business continuity and the managed service provider community to this role and focuses on supporting Datto partner community and growing their business. He's our major sponsor today, so let's thank for Eric from Datto. All right. Paul, for, for joining us today. I, I know what it's like being out of the office for a little while and then having to go back and, and play catch up, so I, I certainly appreciate your time. Um, as mentioned, I'm Eric Torres, Channel Development Manager. My role at Datto is to be one of the, the company's evangelists. I go travel all over the world, really, and just spread the, the word about, about Datto and what we do and how we can protect networks. Um, I am on the road. Uh, I'm a road warrior. I'm on the road about three weeks out of the month at least. Uh, home on the weekends to see my dog. That's about it. So I enjoy it, though. I get to meet folks like you and, and find out what's working, what's not working, and, and what stresses you out, and then bottle all of that up and, and share it with the masses and, and explain how we can help. Uh, real quick about Datto, since most people don't know who we are, we only sell through our partners. We only sell through TaylorWorks. Uh, they're the experts. They're the ones that design and, and build and maintain these networks. We're just a tool that they use to make sure that your data remains safe. Uh, we were founded by our current CEO, more out of necessity than anything else. Uh, he's pretty young. He founded the, the company right out of college. He's younger than me. Um, I think he's about 31. And it was, it was out of necessity. He couldn't find a job. And what he sought out to do was create a, a business continuity solution that enterprise size companies used, but make it affordable for businesses of all sizes. And since then, since he maxed out all of his credit cards, took a loan out from his parents, and built the solution, wrote the code in his parents' basement, we have grown the company to uh, 35 global locations. We're pe uh, protecting um, almost, or it's just under 400 petabytes of data, which is a lot. And uh, we're on every single continent. I share this in every presentation I do. We're on every single continent except for Antarctica. And for three years, I've been saying this exact same thing. If anybody has an in in Antarctica, I will give you a free, free device. This worked two weeks ago. I swear to you, I was in Denver, and I said that, and somebody raised their hand, and he said, my girlfriend goes down there every year to, to work in some lab. Can you do that? And now we will have, starting in October, we will have a device in Antarctica. 
All right, so enough about Datto. Um, this is, oh, this is a, a heat map. This is every single device that, that we have out there. It's not for bragging rights. This is more of a story about our CEO. He is completely unlike me. He writes code when he's bored. He's a computer guy. When I'm bored, I find all kinds of trouble to get into. And, and he was bored one day, and he, he said, I want to see where all of my devices are. So he did this one night, Friday night. The next day, he showed up at the office, and he built a, a wall bigger than this wall in our office, an LED wall, where it's just this globe spinning. So every day we go to the office, we see uh, how, far, how far we're coming along. Speaking of our office, uh, this is an actual room in our office. This is our, our war room. It's monitored 24-7, 365, and what we're looking for in, in this room are, are weather patterns, disasters. We know that natural disasters do take down networks. It's very slim, but they do take down networks and they do destroy businesses. We need to know when that happens and we need to know right away. So we monitor weather patterns. We need to know if there's a tornado in, in Tulsa or a hurricane coming this way so that we can stay in front of it and say, okay, we've got a team here that if you do go down, we're, we're here to help. And typically in, uh, in my travels and in my stories that I share, I tell people not to think about the natural disasters. That's what everybody thinks about when they think of, of a backup solution. They think of the, the fires, the floods, the tornadoes, the hurricanes, and those are, that's what people think of when it comes to backing up their data in regards to ransomware, cybersecurity, that is more likely to happen. So we are monitoring it regardless. And this past summer, we, we saw uh, quite a, a, a rough summer compared to other ones. We saw this Hurricane Harvey building up and, and heading towards Houston. And one of the things that, that our CEO, Austin, uh, did is, is rather than have a team waiting for our partners to call us and say, hey, uh, we have, need to virtualize these networks, somebody went down, uh, we did something different. We sent five of our, our engineers ahead of the storm. When we saw this building, we put them in a truck and said, start driving to Texas. We don't know where you're going. We don't know where you're gonna stay. We'll figure that out during your drive. Just get down there and start helping our partners back up data. So we actually had boots on the ground before this hit. And when it did hit, all of us saw the devastation that Houston went through, literally under nine feet of water. And what we did is we asked our partners. We said, what do you want us to do first? And the first thing that they told us to do was, we need to go to the shelters. And we need to deploy our, our that's our data networking device. Um, that's, it's uh, basically a wireless connection over a 5G signal. And we set up every single shelter from Houston all the way out to San Antonio just to let people get back online and let their families know that they were safe. Um, so that's what we did, and, and uh, we spent a lot of time doing that. And then after we got all those, those um, shelters online, then we went through and started backing up data and getting all of these places, all these businesses virtualized so that all these small businesses could get back to work, could take care of their clients, and while, while we rebuilt the, the network in the background. Uh, while that happened in Houston, there was a, another hurricane heading this way, so we sent another team um, down to Tampa to basically do the exact same thing. Trucks filled with equipment, and Austin gave it all away for free. And it wasn't for publicity, it was just saying, these people are about to get hurt, we have an opportunity to help them, and that's exactly what we did. So I know the pictures are kind of hard to read, but we actually do have trucks loaded at a moment's notice. We can send engineers on site to help our, our partners help their clients. So we can help TaylorWorks help you guys in the event that something major happened in, in the sense of a natural disaster. But I'm here to talk about rethinking backup um, from exactly what was shared earlier about the ransomware, about stories like that, because people are your greatest risk when it comes down to it. We do awful things to our computer networks. TaylorWorks designs these networks that are beautiful. They're fast, they're speedy, they work. You click a button and it does what it's supposed to do, but then you unleash people like me on the network who's downloading everything, clicking on links I shouldn't click on, putting all those toolbars in my browser because I need that half second a day back, and then I'm calling them saying, hey, how come my computer's running slow? What's going on with the network? And they're like, well, you idiot. Look at all the stuff you downloaded to the network. This is your fault. We're the people you need to worry about, the people that are clicking on all these links and downloading all this bad stuff blindly. And, and I do this for a living, and I still click on these things. So that's, that's what we need to think of, is, is people being your greatest risk. And I have some stories about, um, that I've picked up along the way that, that further share this. Um, if anybody's heard of the Alcoa breach, this is actually a, a couple years ago, but still very relevant. 
Alcoa is a, a multi-billion dollar global enterprise uh, corporation. And they essentially have an unlimited IT budget. They have the best hardware that you can possibly buy. They have the, the tightest security. The, the most beautiful network is their network. And they got hacked. And what, what makes this per story particularly interesting is that the Wall Street Journal took notice of this. And they said if Alcoa got hacked, how is that possible? They have the, the state of the art equipment. And they sent some reporters to China to, to look for these bad guys. And they actually found them. And they got to interview them, which is astounding in, in the first place. And they said, how did you do it? How did you get into the, the strongest network, the most fortified network that's out there? And these bad guys just laughed. They said, it's actually really simple. All we did is we went to LinkedIn and found out their naming convention of their email address. First initial, last name, at Alcoa. Sent an email to everybody in the company because we know that at least one employee will click on anything. And that's exactly what they did. That's how they got past that beautiful security, that beautiful firewall, the best that money can buy. It was simply hidden in an email. Uh, another story from about two years ago, our Pentagon got, got attacked by a phishing scam, and, and this one is a little bit different. They didn't send an email to everybody in the Pentagon. They only picked 15 people, the top 15 guys they could find, and they did their research first. This is the first instance where these, these bad guys actually did homework before they attacked. Usually they just cast a wide net. This one was very targeted. They went to their Facebook, their LinkedIn, their Instagram. They figured out where their kids went to school, figured out their kids' friends' names based on pictures on Facebook. Hey, Johnny hangs out with Sarah. And that's how they crafted their message. Can Johnny come over to Sarah's house this weekend for a birthday party? Click here for directions. If you have a son named Johnny that hangs out with Sarah and it's her birthday this weekend, you're clicking on that link. That's exactly how they got into the Pentagon. That's the steps that these bad guys are taking when it comes down to it. They're doing their homework and they're doing these phishing schemes in order to, to get the information that they need to attack the, the networks that they're planning on attacking. Back in the day, these, these bad guys that were, uh, were just some guy in their parents' basement that was hacking for bragging rights more than anything else. Uh, they would break into somewhere and maybe steal some movies and put them on the internet and then they go on some, some chat forum and say, hey, you know those free movies that were just posted? That was me. I did that. That's what they did. And then they started organizing. And that's what made them dangerous. Once they started organizing, they figured out ways on how to make money. They figured out how to create ransomware and spread ransomware. And that's the story. That's the, the, the reasoning behind why you need a business continuity solution is because these bad guys are getting so far advanced, we cannot stop them. And here's some stories about ransomware that are my favorite stories over the past, uh, I would say, year. Uh, this one from last year uh, was one that tests our own morality. This one is ab absolutely fascinating. So this one, if anybody has heard of it or have seen it, I don't know if you've caught wind of this one, but popcorn time. This particular strain of ransomware poses a question to those victims. You can either pay the ransom, and you may get your data back. As, as he mentioned, that they don't have to give you your data back. They're criminals. But you can either pay to get your data back, or you can send it to two of your friends. And if they pay the ransom, you'll get your data back for free. They're outsourcing their criminal ways. So that's how far outside of the box they're thinking. And this started working. And I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely have at least two ex-girlfriends I would love to give ransomware to. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the evolution that, that we're now watching with ransomware and, and how far outside of these box, uh, the box these guys are thinking. And in this case, they, they, they made it more user friendly. What if, what if my friend was on the other side of the world and didn't speak the language that I, that I spoke? Well, don't worry. In the pop-up, they translate it. Now it's available. Simple, user-friendly drop-down. What language can I explain how you can pay me the ransom in? That's what, that's what this particular strain, and, and we watched it. It was, it was about a, a, a three-week process as they started adding these, these features to the ransomware. Uh, there's this one, too, WannaCry. Everybody heard about WannaCry last summer. It was last May, and what WannaCry was, it was a, a worm that spread all throughout computer networks all over the world, and it sat dormant and just waited for direction. So it infected all these networks, and one day they gave it direction. They turned it on. They infected, it was, um, what was it, 150 different countries and 200,000 networks in an instant. And when they turned it on, 
it was mass outbreak all over the world and, and nobody really knew what to do. But fortunately, it was an easy fix. Somebody fixed it in, in, a, in about a week. But the real reason behind this is on that day when this happened, those bad guys, the, the FBI had traced back, they only made about 30 grand that day, which is peanuts compared to how large this outbreak was. And they started digging into it more. Okay, well, why on earth did you only make 30 grand from something that large that the world has never seen so the likes of before? They figured out it wasn't even about the ransom ask at all. It was about the value of Bitcoin. On that day, the value of Bitcoin quadrupled. So they were so far uh, outward thinking that, okay, well, if my money is already sitting in an account, how can I double? How can I triple? How can I quadruple that money without doing that much work? And that's exactly what WannaCry is. Fortunately for us on the Datto side, that week that this happened, we only had five of our, our partners that had a client that actually got caught with WannaCry where we just had to rewind the hands of time and act like it didn't happen which isn't that many when you consider how, how big of an outbreak that, that was. And here's the last one that I'll share with you, the, the Big Mac ransom. Have you guys ever heard of the Big Mac index? It's a, the cost of a Big Mac in your specific area, and they, they track this. This is the first strain of ransomware that changes the ransom ask based on the Big Mac index. So for example, if, if you live in Manhattan and you're used to paying six bucks for a Big Mac, I'm gonna ask more money in ransom of you because you're used to paying more goods for your services versus Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where it's $3. I'm not gonna to ask too much because I don't want you not to pay me and say that's too rich for my blood. That's the first one that, that changed the ask, which is absolutely fascinating with how far that's gone. But they even took it a step further. We, kept, we watched this and, and we had our eyes on this one. And as we're watching it, we, we saw something else. It popped up on the dark web within seven days. Meaning, any one of us can log in, and if you know how to log into the dark web, any one of us can buy this ransomware. Once it started working, they said, let's keep doing the ransomware side, but let's also sell it. So you can buy this from the bad guys and start doing it on your own. Essentially, these guys created a product, and what happens when you have a product, you have to support it. So about a week later, it popped up. You can now chat with the guys that actually wrote this code over an encrypted uh, communication method, but you can have them change the color of the box. Or if you need help setting up a Bitcoin account, you can just chat with them and they'll walk you right through the process. That's the evolution of these bad guys. That's what they're thinking about when it comes to gaining their, their, their money in, in an illegal fashion and how far ahead of us we truly, they truly are. So you have to have a solution on the back end that says, if I get that, I have a way to, to recover. And I get this all the time. I, I, in all of uh, my time in the industry and meeting with, with potential clients and clients alike, um, I got this all the time. I have a great backup solution. Um, that's great. Everybody thinks they have a good one. They have their data living somewhere else. Or as, as he mentioned, uh, or as you mentioned, having a, a, a rotating drive that they take off site. Or heaven forbid, and if anybody is ever is still backing up to a tape, <laughs> magnetic tape that spins, I just want to share with you that technology was invented in 1928, and it's still being used to, to back up data. So, um, but but I, I digress. So um, as far as as I have a good backup solution, I don't need a, a business continuity solution. And I'll explain the difference in a second. That's exactly what San Francisco thought. They got hit with with ransomware, and what this ransomware did is it it shut down all of their kiosks for the transit system. No more tickets to get on any other transit system uh, trains or buses. And these guys, they, they, uh, their CTO said, what do we do? And their staff said, we'll just restore from our backup solution. We have a great backup. It's living in an offsite site. We'll just go get it and then rebuild the network. They said, great, go ahead and do that. The only problem is, as a result, their network was down for two days while they rebuilt that network. And it wasn't just any two days. It was the Friday and Saturday after Thanksgiving, the two most heavily traveled days. <laughs> they, they, sorry, an interesting note on this one is they had an incident response plan that every business should have that's if something happens, here's who you call, here's you know what you do for the backups. The issue was nobody had a printed copy. <laughs> and so every, their email systems were all locked down. Yep. And so part of the delay and a really good lesson from this one is have a printed copy because if you rely on a file that you have on your systems that tells you what to do and who to call, 
and it gets locked down, that will slow you down. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm going to add it. I'm going to add that to mine. Uh, in this case, what they did is they didn't uh, they didn't shut down the train system and the bus system. They they just opened up the gates, providing 735,000 rides per day on those two days. And you can see where I'm going: a dollar to 225 a rider. That's how much money they lost between 1.5 and 3.3 million. San Francisco won't ever admit to actually how much money they lost. Just like what's happening right now in Atlanta. Is everybody aware of what's happened? What happened last month in Atlanta? Uh, the city of Atlanta got ransomware as well. I was in Atlanta last week doing uh, events like this. They're still down. It's been over a month. They still don't have their, their data back. And uh, they've spent, so far they've spent over $2 million just on consultants to tell them what to do and how to get it back. Um, the city of Atlanta police department is actually still writing everything by hand. Wow. They don't have a network to, to enter all of this in yet, which is frightening. That's what's happening out there, and that's why we need a, a, a good business continuity solution. Um, we know that ransomware is running rampant. We're never going to be able to stop it. Uh, it isn't going away. It's only, they're only getting better and better at hiding it. So we need to do something about it. We need to have something that protects us. And what we're doing at Datto is something that, that no other continuity provider is doing. What we have is actual ransomware detection. And what this is, I want to be very clear, this isn't security. This isn't your, your, your fortress around you. This is saying if anything gets through that wall, we have a way to, to detect it and do it in near real time. So let me explain how this works. So what we have at Data, we have an appliance, either physical or virtual, that lives on your network. It's backing up your data in as little as every five minutes. Uh, you can customize it depending on what it's backing up. But we're taking a snapshot image of every single device that, that's on your network. All the files, folders, your desktop background, your software, all the kids' pictures, we're backing all that up and saving it every five minutes in time. We're just keeping a copy of it. And since we have each one of those images, we're able to restore from that image and virtualize that image. And since we're able to do that, we're also able to run scans on every single backup. Uh, when you get ransomware, it, it encrypts all your files just like that. We're able to see that in near real time and then raise a red flag and say, hey, TaylorWorks, there's something wrong in that last backup. You should go in there and you should, you should first go in and, and virtualize that data, get them running in a safe environment, and then go find out if that was indeed ransomware in the background while you are still working, still using the same software that you're using, still have all the same shortcuts, all the same desktop backgrounds, and you're taking care of your clients, and in the background, TaylorWorks is going in there and, and figuring out if you got ransomware and fixing it if indeed that happened. That's business continuity. Being able to rewind the hands of time and act like whatever bad happened didn't happen. That's the difference. So rethink backup from a sense of, of disasters and start thinking about the bad guys that are out there. Start thinking about business continuity. Um, and I, I shared some of this already, but what is continuity, what is not continuity? continuity. It's always easier for me to explain what is not continuity first. Uh, I mentioned the local and, and tape backup. If you're still using that, you need to talk to TaylorWorks because <laughs> that is technology that we need to get out of your, your computer network. There are much better solutions that are out there. Um, and a file-based backup, that's where we're just backing up bits and pieces of your network rather than, than everything. Um, so continuity, uh, it's, and I hate using industry buzzwords, and this is, this is one of them, it's a hybrid cloud-based backup. That's a fancy way of saying we have multiple copies of your data. We have a copy that lives on site. Everything on site is replicated to our data center on the East Coast. Everything in that data center is replicated to a, another data center in Utah. And if something happens to both of those data centers, uh, it means something really awful is happening to our country, and our, your data is probably the least of all of our worries if both coasts are, are completely wiped out. So we have multiple copies of your data, at least three at any one time. We're able to uh, deliver an image-based backup, but deliver superior RTO and RPO, that's more industry buzzwords, recovery time objective, and recovery point objective. Uh, that's basically how much does downtime cost me. And I've got a great way to, to calculate that, that for your specific network in less than five minutes, we can sit down and, and tell you exactly uh, the ballpark of what uh, uh, downtime is going to cost you. And we eliminate downtime through the virtualization. So every one of those five minute backups we're taking, we can boot up. And we do boot up. We, we test them every single night. 
So what is, what is continuity and, and uh, how does it actually work, this virtualization? So you're working. And for whatever reason, you can't work. Say it's a hurricane, say it's ransomware, say your, your motherboard fried. Something bad happened and you can't work, whether it's your workstation or your server. What we do is we, we go over to our data appliance and we spin up an exact same image of that within seconds, having the exact same software that you have, all your files, all your folders in a safe environment that you can now work and continue to take care of your clients. That's what instant virtualization is. Uh, the benefits, obviously, we, we reduce downtime. Uh, we help with your recovery time objective and recovery point objective. Again, that's something I'll go over in a second. We can do this both from the on-site appliance or from our data center. So if your server fries, you have a hardware failure, we just turn our box into your server. It's as simple as that. If you lose your whole building, you lose your whole network, we spin up your entire network, everything from our data center, and you work from there while TaylorWorks is now building your network back up to the way it should be. That's what instant virtualization is. Uh, can you demonstrate it? Yes, this is where we get awfully uh, uh, fun and, and exciting presentations that uh, unfortunately we won't do here anymore or here today. But if anybody's ever bored, check out disasterdemo.com because we actually record our, our presentations and, and our disaster demos. Um, this is uh, Ian McCord in, in this picture here. This is our CEO's younger brother. And, and one day he, he came in and he said, if, if our solution's that good, if it's that fast, why don't we demonstrate it live in front of people? And he said, I can go in, I can simulate a disaster, I can bring a network down and show people live during a presentation of me bringing it right back. And that's the, the disaster demo and, and where it was born. So we're giving this presentation from that, that um, uh, laptop right there. What we do is we'll destroy that laptop. We'll bring it down somehow, whether that's infecting it with ransomware or lighting it on fire or doing something to it to break it. And then we go to our appliance and we spin it right back up live in the middle of a presentation in about 10 seconds. I can get my presentation back, my laptop back in a virtual fashion. That's what incident virtualization is. That's what a disaster demo is. But the way that we do these is, is awfully exciting. Usually we do this in a room full of a few hundred IT professionals. And if you've ever been to an IT event, they're dreadfully boring. You've got, you've got speakers up here that just suck the life out of the room. Everybody's on their one, phone. Not this, not this one. one. I hope not this one. But they, they do. Everybody, they, they just suck the life out of the room. And, and then suddenly, Dado walks in there. We walk in there. And we light a, a two-foot flame in the front of everybody. And everybody's like, holy crap, what was that? What are you doing? We do the disaster demo. This is actually me the, the very first time I did it. This is in Birmingham, Alabama. And I, put, uh, I lit my laptop on fire and put too much flash paper in there and uh, actually burned the hair off my hand. And uh, that poor guy in the front row had to smell that burning hair smell through the rest of my presentation. It, it was not that fun. So we'll destroy devices. And don't worry, for every device we destroy, we donate two to charity. Um, <laughs> but we'll destroy a device, simulate a disaster, and then virtualize and get the data right back. Um, we don't always light fires. Sometimes I'll, I'll pick the guy out of the room that looks like he's uh, not having a good day or he's really bored, and I'll have him just slam it on the ground. In this case, uh, I had somebody light it on fire because I am a pyromaniac, and, and it was fun anyway. Um, Here's another one, Ian McCord at our partner conference a couple years ago. He froze our devices, and they're spinning hard drives in these. And I was right, I was to the left of him during this, and they started wobbling and making weird noises as he froze them. And we don't practice any of these. These are live on the spot in front of people. And I was genuinely concerned it was going to explode. I did not know what was going to happen that day, but it worked. We had another event just like this for a partner that wanted to play with thermite. If anybody's ever heard of thermite, chemical reaction between magnesium and aluminum. We actually had to do it outside because it produces molten lava. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we burned that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we had an, another case. We just opened our office in Sydney, Australia. Downtown Sydney sold out Marriott, 600 rooms. We were down there and we did a disaster demo. We told our engineer to go big. He went really big and that was the ball of, of fire. And uh, what we didn't know about Australia is that they set their smoke detectors way more sensitive than in the US. And sure enough, all the alarms in the Marriott sold out. Marriott started going off. All 600 rooms started getting evacuated. The fire department came, and, and uh, we had four very large and very upset Australian firefighters in the back of the room just going, you stupid Americans. What are you doing in here? 
lighting a fire in, in a Marriott. It's, it's actually in our contracts with Marriott. We can no longer do the disaster demo. Like it's, they know who Datto is at this point. Uh, we got in a lot of trouble, and, and in that case, we had to call our CEO, Austin, in the middle of the night and say, we, we got a fine for that, $7,000. And we had to call him and say, Austin, we got a $7,000 ticket tonight. And the first words, the joys of working for a millennial, the first words out of his mouth, he goes, was it cool? <laughs> We're like, heck yes, it was awesome. The ball of fire was so big. So he's like, don't worry, we put it on the credit card, we'll pay for it, just don't do it again. So I stopped lighting fires. Uh, this is us in, in Calgary uh, at an event just like this, a much smaller room. I don't light fires anymore, I, I, I stream it from my laptop and then I had, in this case, I had somebody from the audience drill a hole through the laptop in the middle of it. But I'm not that bright of a guy and, and uh, I forgot to take out the battery. And when you drill a hole through a battery, um, that's what happens. <laughs> so yeah, watch, hand it to Eric, he'll go running out of the restaurant with <laughs> the flaming laptop. So we, we got in a lot of trouble there. That's actually where the, the Calgary Flames play. It's a restaurant in the arena. And, uh, and they had a concert that night, and that's a worse smell than burning hair. Um, <laughs> so we had, uh, we had all the uh, maintenance guys coming in going, you idiots, what are you doing in here? Um, so we got in a lot of trouble there. So we won't do a disaster demo, but that's our solution. That's our technology and what we can do. Rethink back up from a sense of disaster, start thinking about business continuity. Um, before I close out, I did want to hit right back on the RTO and RPO. Recovery time objective and recovery point objective. These are two very important things for any business owner, uh, any executive. Um, I'm a pictures guy. If you can't draw it for me, chances are I'm not going to remember it, especially when it comes to IT. Uh, so here's what our marketing department drew for me. Your disaster strikes, no matter what it is. Your RPO, recovery point objective, how far back in time are we going to restore your data? At what point? Is it yesterday? Is it two days ago? How far back? How much data are you willing to lose? And then recovery time objective is how, much, how long can you be without your network before you start worrying about your business and can you survive? So when you think about those terms, we created a, a calculator. In less than five minutes, anybody in this room can calculate what downtime costs them. I'll run through it real quick. Step one is about your RTO, RPO, time values. It's a sliding scale. You just, you just slide it to, is it a couple hours ago that we're willing to lose? And how long can I be without the data? Step two is about the network itself. How much data is on the network? What's your current backup process look like? If you went down right now, who are you calling to get your data back? How long is it going to take to get them there? All of that comes into play when it, when it comes to the cost of downtime. Step three is about the business itself. How many employees do you have? How many, how much are you, what's the average wage of those employees? How much is your overhead, which most people don't know, your average overhead is roughly half your average wage. That will help you get through this, this exercise. And then if you're, um, let's say you're a lawyer, where you know your billable hours, or a CPA, if you know that your employees bring in a certain dollar amount per hour, and you know that, you can enter that in here as well. And in the end, you hit calculate, and it tells you in less than five minutes, what an hour, hour's worth of downtime costs your business. And then you look at that and just say, how often did my network go down last year? Last year? That's how much money we invested on just being down versus, OK, in this case, with 400 gigs of data, it's almost four grand for being down for an hour, whereas we have a solution that's roughly a cell phone plan a month to provide true business continuity. That's the difference. That's, that's what we need when it comes to all these bad guys, all the ransomware stories that are out there. We're in, in the business of total data protection. We protect all the data that's on the network because all data is critical. And that's what we do and, and how we, we help our, our great partner like uh, TaylorWorks. So how are TaylorWorks and Datto helping? Uh, we have this RTO, RPO calculator. We don't need your email at, or we don't need your, your, you to buy anything or anything like that at this time. To get all of this and to, get a, um, a, to talk with the fine folks at TaylorWorks, send an email to sales at TaylorWorks.net. Did I get that right? All right, cool. Uh, sales at TaylorWorks.net. They can talk to you about your current uh, backup situation and how they can help. And even if it's not just about business continuity, about network maintenance and how they can come in and, and use some of their services to make sure that your network is always running as it's designed to run. So sales at TaylorWorks.net. And I end every presentation with my email address, et at datto.com. If anybody has any questions, wants any more information, needs any help, um, I, I can certainly uh, help out. So et at datto.com. And thank you all for your time. All right.